purpose of this program is to communicate often with the parents and to have a positive communication and a useful communication and it brings us up to our goals right to the end of the year so I want to thank all of you for the support that you have provided so far with the APTT program. As we get into our meeting and we start looking at the goal sheets you will notice that this program is definitely making a difference. Um, so far I've had 100% parent involvement with all of the individual conferences so that was a great way to kick off the program. Tonight's objective we have two First, we will review the scores and goals from quarters one and two. And the second objective, we will highlight areas in math that we can support our students and give you time at the end to actually practice the activities so you can take that home with you to use as part of their homework and extra support. Okay, now to get into the heart of why we're here tonight. Um, this is a graph and it shows my entire class. I have 20 students at the time that I made this. I'm 100 as the example. And it shows in your folder, if you look at the top of your goal sheet, there is a number in the top corner in red with a circle around it. My example is me, I'm number 100. So if you look up at the graph, this would be me with regards to my whole entire class. So this is kind of a good way for the parents to see how your child is um, scoring with the rest of the students that they're in a classroom with. At the first APTT meeting, I said that I wanted all of my students to be reading at least 20 words a minute. So if you look, you can see that just about my entire class is above that goal. So we are definitely on the right track for reading 47 words to be considered meets or exceeds by the end of the year. Roughly about here is what's considered 47. So if I run my finger along, you can definitely see that I already have some students that are already meeting the end of the year goal. I don't want them to stop. I want to push them. I would love to see all of my students reading 60 or 70 words and have them reading up to where second graders are because it's only going to make next year that much easier for them and they'll succeed even more. So it's very important that you're practicing the reading homework every night. This is a great activity that I showed you at the first meeting to help them improve on their reading. They're timing themselves. They're, they're already practicing that one minute quick read and it's nice for the children to be able to graph this so they can see their progress as well as the parents keeping track of their progress. And this is something that I, I am very proud of with them. Um, I had about 98% of my students make gains on their oral reading. They improved by five, some even 20, 30 words, which is out of this world considering we still have another two quarters left to continue practicing and working with them at home. So I'm very excited to see what the end all outcome is. And this is a sample goal sheet of actually what I'm holding. These are scores that I made up. Um, I'm going to make my goal 47. So that's just how you read the first row on your goal sheet um, in case some of you weren't here at the first meeting. And I just have the August, October, December. And then for our third and final meeting, that goal will be changed to their end um, score that I gave them the progress monitor on. And with this goal, this is not something that's set in stone. If you're working with your child at home and you find out, hey, they're reading 55 words when I'm working with them, and I'm realizing the same thing, I may set up a meeting with you and have you come in and ask to change that goal. Um, moving on to high frequency words, 85% of my students meet or exceed the grade level standard as of December when I gave them the test. 85% of the students met the goal of reading 100 words or more. And I had 90% of the students increase the number of words that they read from the previous test. So to compare these numbers to, for example, percents that I use on report cards, 85% is considered meeting, 90% is exceeding. So they're meeting the goal of 100 words and they're meeting the expectation and you yourself are meeting the expectation and 90% of my students and parents are exceeding the expectation of learning these high frequency words. The high frequency word goals. The students are responsible for knowing 225 first grade words by the end of the year. Our first goal was 100 words 
by December, which is for our second APTT meeting, the end of the year goal is reading 225 words. And just like with the oral reading, in order to ensure um, the success that we had for reading along with high frequency words is that you practice the words for their homework. Along with reading, I send home a graph that looks very similar to this, but for high frequency words. At the bottom of that graph, I have the date on the bottom that you are to test them. And I've chosen every Wednesday as that one day a week to practice those words just because it's an early day from school and they have more time to do homework. And on the other nights, we have the rest of the high frequency words made into cards. We cut out one set for you. We left the other set stapled together because I figured this would be another great way for you to practice these words. Talk to them about the words as you're cutting them out with them at home and use these as a tool to practice those words with them. Use them as flashcards or the concentration game or the go fish game that we sent home at the beginning of the year. Some parents came to me and asked, do I need to test them with all of the words, starting with one? My answer to that is yes. The only reason I require you to test them with all of the words once a week is because I don't want them to fall backwards. And I will be sending home a new high frequency word list with all the words highlighted that they can read so you can pick up and continue to practice the same way that you've been doing it since the beginning of the year. When I give the test, we start at the beginning and they read the words to me. If they come to a word and they stop, I go one, two, three. I either tell them the word or we skip to the next one. It's not a time test like the reading. They have as much time as they need. They can read them as slow as they would like, as fast as they would like. With the speed though, I tend to see more errors made. Um, so if they're stuck on a word, don't make them sit there for five minutes trying to figure it out. Just count three seconds and then move along to the next word and make your mark so you know that they need to go back and practice. And if you look at the graph, this was the goal for December. And as you can see, 85% of my class met that goal, if not exceeded that goal. And I already have some students who are already reading 225 words. And am I going to stop them there? No, I'm going to continue to push them along. And I've now given them second grade words that I've already started testing them on. And then again, this is just my sample goal sheet that I created for myself at the beginning of the year. My pretest was 36 words. If I tested myself again in October, I improved by 72, then up to 125, which means my I'm not at that 225 yet. So my goal is to read 225 by the end of March, beginning of April. Okay, now for tonight's activity, we're gonna start focusing more on math. The students were given addition and subtraction facts assessments. Um, they were given 10 minutes, 30 problems of addition, 30 problems of subtraction. In that 10 minutes, I count how many um, answers are correct and with that, their goal by the end of the year is to um, answer all 30 problems and have all 30 correct answers. And then to add to that goal, after they've mastered 30 problems at 10 minutes, I'm changing it now to the speed. Now I want them, to, they have, they're accurate with their addition and subtraction. Now how fast can they do it? Okay, so we're gonna practice two activities that you can use at home to help with this. Okay, the first activity that we're going to play, um, it's called Super Combos. And the directions are English on the front and then there's also Spanish on the back. You simply roll the dice, then the children count the number of dots. And I like to draw a square, so it's a visual thing, almost like they're picturing the dice on a piece of paper. There's one dot, so they put one dot on the paper. And I'll model for you first an addition problem, so I would put an addition sign plus four equals, now they're gonna go back and they're gonna count all of the dots. Well, they would see the answer is five. And I want them to start with drawing the pictures and as you see them improving on it, start having them take away pictures and just do the math problem uh, mentally in their head. But starting with the pictures is, is the first step. This game is something that you can expand on if you see that they're starting to add two numbers really fast. 
challenge them and you can always go to the dollar store they have tons of dice there you can have them roll three at a time and add three numbers four numbers I mean there's tons of options that you can use with using the dice and doing addition problems now I'll teach you a game using the same dice but with subtraction so it's the same steps you roll the dice when you subtract, you count the total number of dots on both dice. So instead of separating them this time, I'm going to count all of them. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So I can draw one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to take one away, and it doesn't matter which one. If I want to take the one away, that's fine. If I want to minus four, I can take that away. So I'm going to minus one. my answer would then be the four that are left. And again, using the sentence frame, instead of having them say the answer's four or just saying four, difference is the term that you use when you're talking about an answer you get when you subtract. And the students, again, know that, so they would say the difference is four. So on this one, I'm not gonna take the time to draw out 12 dots, but I can put the number 12. And this is another strategy. If, if you see that they're becoming faster with the pictures, start taking those pictures away and simply having them write the number so the subtraction problem becomes more visual for them. Um, it doesn't matter which one you take away. You can take away the red one, subtract the white one. So I would minus six equals six. Again, using my sentence frame, the difference is six. Along with having them write it this way, another um, way that they often see subtraction problems, even addition problems, would be like this, 12 minus six. For the longest time I had my students writing the answer over here on the side, and the answer is supposed to go underneath the line. So have them practice writing the problems in, with both directions. The next activity is flashcard war, and it's very similar to the war that was played using um, actual cards. Um, we've printed a set of flashcards for addition and subtraction, different colors so they don't get them confused, or if brothers or sisters dump them all on the floor, you can separate them quickly. I'll model for you how to play. Just distribute the cards evenly so you can take the piles and separate them. The players keep their cards face down. At the same time, we each flip over a card. So mine is 10 plus 5. Yadira has 3 plus 10. So I would figure out my problem, 10 plus 5. The sum is 15. Again, I'm using that language that we use here in the classroom. We're answering incomplete sentences. Yadira would say, 3 plus 10, the sum is 13. And I would like them to practice reading the addition sentence as they're playing the game. Whoever has the greatest sum, which in my, this case it's me, 15 is greater than 13, therefore I would get to keep the cards. And you just continue to play the game the same way until both piles are empty. And the subtraction is played the exact same way, except for they're subtracting and they're using the sentence frame. The difference is, again, whoever has the greatest difference would get to keep the cards. Okay, so I'll give you a couple minutes. You can play either with addition or subtraction. I know we're running um, short on time and I wanna give you a chance to practice, so I will let you pick. Okay, if you don't mind, please go ahead and put away your flashcards. There's just a few more things I wanna discuss before you're free to go. If you feel the need to meet with me, if you have concerns, even questions, Please don't hesitate, let me know. If, if I feel that I need to meet with you to discuss some things that are happening in the classroom, I will also contact you. And Yadira and I do work very close with each other. Um, I, I communicate with her daily almost. Um, so the best way, if you don't see me in the morning or catch me after school, just write a note and I can always run down and have her translate for me. So um, please just get a hold of me.